Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Uh, this is an unexpected video um, making here this morning, but I'm um, going to um, share with you an article that a friend, a friend sent on to me. Um, <laughs> Son of perdition, anyone? <laughs> You know what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid for the lost. Now we we have to remember in pursuant, being pursuant with uh, what we read in Second Timothy chapter three. Uh, we have to understand that what the climate of our world is today, and that uh, people also in Second Thessalonians chapter two, where. Um, well, you know what? Instead of just quoting these out in the air, let's let's go there. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verses ten on to verse twelve. We've gone over these many times, Church of the Living God. But this we need to go over it again. Because uh, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to share with you this article. Links will be provided. Okay. Second Thessalonians chapter ten, uh, chapter two, verses ten on to verse twelve. And with all the savableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Send them. They don't want to believe. You lost people. You don't want to believe the truth. You don't want to come to the true Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the God of the authorized version of the scriptures. No, you want to believe in a God of your own making, one, uh, a God who doesn't have any requirements, doesn't judge. And according to what some people tell you, you save yourself by your belief. Okay? God will send you what you want. You want that man of sin, the son of perdition? There it is. <laughs> it's being set up to, uh, the world is being set up to receive him. Okay? And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, we also read about how um, in the book of Jeremiah, where God says, pray not for these people, because my mind could not be set toward them. Um, I believe I uh, quoted that in a video lately. I can't remember which one. Uh, but people, a populace, a nation, will reach a point of no return. Not that they could not return from that point, it's just that their minds are so affected and their conscience are seared. Not murdered. Seared as with a hot iron. And also too with the steel of the Jesuit poniard and the things that are in there that affect your mind and alter your DNA. It doesn't alter your DNA. Shh. Hey, look, like, like, like the scripture says. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You want to go ahead and believe, you know, the, the Catholic disease creators? Go right ahead. Okay? Go right ahead. God will give you what you want. Okay? <laughs> okay? God will give you what you want. And also, we also have to remember in 2 Timothy chapter uh, 3... Verse 1, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Are these not perilous times? For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, 
having a form of godliness, a form of godliness. Remember, godliness is associated with being distinct, separate, other, okay? Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. We know this Church of the Living God about what is going on today. We know that. Still doesn't detract from caring for these people who are going to be left behind. You know, those like the scripture saith, those who have an ear, let him hear. Okay? And that's what we hope for. My concern is for you lost people who are going to be left behind. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Beginning at verse 13 on to verse 30. And then we're going to get to this article. Okay? We're going to be looking at two articles actually. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning, beginning at verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. There are many out there who say they're Christians. And yeah, don't, I'm not even going to get started on what I think of Christians. Okay, I'm not a Christian, by the way. I'm of the Church of the Living God. Okay, distinction. Okay, we need distinction today. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now you, Church of the Living God, you know this, but I'm not really addressing you. Ministers of righteousness, Satan is transformed into an angel of light. And there are his workers, deceitful workers, are transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. I'm a Christian. Okay, what must I do to be saved? Just believe. Oh, oh yeah, you, yeah, you're a Christian, all right. Yeah, yeah. See, one of the common things that you will hear, and this is true, that verses 13 on to verse 15, um, by the way, and oh, and by the way, please follow me along in the authorized version of the scriptures. Please, if I neglected to say that. Please follow me along. We are in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, okay? And we have read verses 13 on to verse 15. Beg your pardon if I neglected to mention that at first. It's a very, a very captivating article that I was sent. But anyway, see, one of the more common things that you will hear about 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 on to verse 15, uh, correlates on to religion, okay? And absolutely that's there. But it's a little deeper than that. Look at the people who say they care about you and want to save lives by you taking the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Okay? By those of out there who are so concerned because of the psychological operation known as the poison crown. Look those words up in Latin on your own time and you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay? But... These verses are deeper than just correlating onto religion. But it is about religion. The religion of the poison crown. The religion of the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Ministers of righteousness. Fauci. These people, the politicians who care so much about you. About these uh, self-help gurus. These motivational speakers. Who love you so much. It's deeper than just religion. Even though it's all about religion. Beware of religion, by the way. What religion? It was, there, there are those of you out there who will um, have issue that I say that. But you got to remember, religion that once was is whoop, hardly the religion that is right now. Y'all got, even you enemies of mine have to agree to that. Let's continue this. I say again, let no man think me a fool. 
If otherwise, yet as a fool, receive me, that I may boast myself a little. See, Paul was put in a place where he's like, look, I really don't want to give you my credentials, but he does. And look how he, uh, about how he prefaces it. I say again, let no man think me a fool. Fool has said in his heart, there is no God. If otherwise, yet as a fool, receive me that I may boast myself a little. See, boasting yourself is foolish. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Okay? Psalm 14 and Psalm 53. Psalm 53. Okay? Look that up. You'll get the scriptural definition of what a fool is. Okay? you got to constantly barrage people with your credentials, your list of what I've done. Look at me, look at me, look at me. You know, I've been doing this for years, and this is mine, all that stuff. you got to do that kind of stuff. No matter the circumstances, you're acting like a fool. Paul himself even admits that. Okay? And acting foolishly is behaving as one who says in their heart that there is no God. Okay? So let's continue. That which I speak, I speak not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. See, because the Corinthians were taken with people who in their flesh, you know, the skin suit, um, were boasting themselves and they looked the part. They even spake smooth things and prophesied deceits. And through peace, shall destroy many. Okay? And they were being taken with that. But you got to remember, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and the base things to confound the mighty. It's the little people. Remember, Israel is the littlest of all nations, but yet they are the apple of God's eye. Let's continue. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. That's an interesting verse because look at the verse. Think about it. It's like, oh, we, we're, we're mature. We're elders. We, we know our stuff. So, yes, we will entertain you fools. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. Howbeit wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. The, you can almost sense how exasperated Paul was with this whole thing. You know, you can almost sense the, like, uh, are, are these guys Hebrews? You know, so am I. You know, you can, you can sense it. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. And these things that he is about to describe, you get the, the sense that what he's about to describe as a true apostle and of the church of the living God, that the latter, that the uh, former here, they themselves, even though they were saying, uh, you know, hey, we're of the church of the living God too. You get the feeling that these people were probably not have none of this what Paul speaks about, that they themselves never went through any of these or can um, relate, you know, because they have men's persons in advantage or men's persons in admiration because of advantage, excuse me. In labors, more abundant. In stripes, above measure. In prisons, more frequent. In deaths, off. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I sh suffered shipwreck. 
A night and a day I have been in the deep. See, Paul was speaking against the religious system. And that religious system that he was basically speaking against was, number one, the religion of the heresies, of heresy, the heathen, but also the Judaism of the time, which was not founded upon Scripture. And besides, uh, Christ Jesus died, buried, and rose again the third day according to, uh, to the Scriptures, okay, and he shed his blood on the cross to atone for sin. He was the ultimate sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice for your sins, okay? Keeping the law is not a requirement for salvation or to stay saved, okay? Paul talks about that in depth, but let's continue. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. There are a few of those out there nowadays. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches, and those aren't buildings, those are bodies of people, not buildings, okay? Remember, remember, God does not dwell in temples made with hands, but if you are saved, born again, converted, ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Because God dwells within you. Okay? Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is offended and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. Why? And if you were to read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, about how Paul was given a thorn in the flesh to keep him humble... The less dependent you are upon yourself, the more dependent you are upon the Lord. We, my wife and I, are totally dependent on the Lord. If he doesn't, we don't. And through you, if he doesn't, we don't. We are totally dependent on our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And who is offended and I burn not? And that is what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid for you lost people. I know that there are going to be many people left behind. But then again, you sometimes personally, I'll reach a point it's like, have I said enough? Have I done enough? Or, you know, uh, what else can I do? You know, and the Lord opens doors, and He closes doors too. And the Lord's will be done in every way, shape, and form. Even though most of us may not understand it at the moment, we got to go with it. But that is what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid for the lost. And like we've already kind of looked at, okay, we've looked at it already. We know that many people are going to be left behind and that many people are not going to hear. We know that. Still doesn't subtract from caring about these people and willing to go out there or speak in just hopes that just just one person that's all it's about so long as one person spirit soul and body hears receives truth is edified instructed rebuked corrected encouraged if one person come to the lord if just one it's like you know you look at a um at a like a flower or something and you spend your life looking for that perfect blossom and it won't be a wasted life if you do that if you look for the perfection in the scriptures if you seek perfection 
And that's not being sinlessly perfect because good luck with that. You cannot be sinlessly perfect today. Oh, and incidentally, young man, I was not talking about you. Okay? I was talking to your older brother. I was not talking about you. I know you'll see this video, so. But anyway. Anyway, okay? That is my concern. I am concerned for the lost people. You lost people or fallen for all this stuff. You're going to get what you deserve. And you're going to get what you're asking for. It doesn't have to be that way. Now, we're going to go through this article that a friend of mine, a brother, of course, sent on to me. We're also going to be looking at another thing, and I'm like I said, I'm going to put links in the description. The name of this article is UN Chief. World is at pivotal moments and must avert crises. <laughs> Son of perdition, much? United Nations AP, verbatim, as best I can. I'll, like I said, I'll put the link. I don't use OBS with articles because I've seen people who use uh, whatever kind of OBS um, for, you know, split screen kind of thing, share screen. You never can read the article. I can never read it. So it's better do it here on my laptop and then put it down there for you to uh, read yourself, okay? But... United Nations AP, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres issued a dire warning that the world is moving in the wrong direction and faces a pivotal moment. Gee, you don't say. Where continuing business as usual could lead to a breakdown of global order and a future of perpetual crisis. Crisis. Changing course could signal a breakthrough to a greater and safer future, he said. Book of Daniel. Book of Daniel. Chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8. Verses 23 on to verse 25. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. The mighty and the holy people. Uh, that, that'd be the Jews, okay? This is talking about that man of sin, the son of perdition, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. The Antichrist does not appear in Scripture, okay? And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 under verse 3. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, church of the living God, ye have no need that I write unto you. For ye yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety! Then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. I remember it had been um, argued before, this peace and safety, well, we have peace and safety, or we need peace and safety. What do we hear a lot of going on right now? We need what? A lot of peace and safety? The article that I'm going to share with you. Okay? Thank you, pardon. Let's continue. The UN chief said the world's nations and people must reserve today's 
reverse today's dangerous trends and choose the breakthrough scenario. Remember, the Black Pope, who is the head of the Jesuit order, said that we cannot go back. We cannot go from once uh, things the way they used to be. We cannot go back from that. When you have the Black Pope, the head of the Jesuit order, the most powerful and deadliest man on earth, say things like that, it's very telling of what's happening. Okay? Uh, many brethren uh, gave the link of a video where the pa uh, Black Pope actually said that. I'll try to find it and link it in this as well, if not in the description box, but in the comment section. Okay? The world is under enormous stress and almost ev on almost every front, he said. And the COVID-19 pandemic was a wake-up call demonstrating the failure of nations to come together and take joint decisions to help all people to face to in the face of a global life-threatening emergency. Gutierrez said this paralysis extends far beyond COVID-19 to the failures to tackle the climate crisis <laughs> and our suicidal war on nature and the collapse of biodiversity. Biodiversity, what does that mean? Somebody please tell me what that means. <laughs> biodiversity. What, is that a reference onto transgenderism? Oh, oh, the unchecked inequality undermining the cohesion of societies and technology's advances without guardrails to protect us from its unforeseen consequences. Boy, this is really sounding in parallel to the Agenda 2030. I don't know, I, I've linked that in several videos. That's... <laughs> In other signs of a more chaotic and insecure world, he pointed to rising poverty, hunger, and gender inequality after decades of decline, the extreme risk to human life, and the planet from nuclear war and a climate breakdown, and the inequality, discrimination, and injustice bringing people into the streets to protest, while conspiracy theories and lies fuel deep divisions within societies. <laughs> yeah. Conspiracy theories. Here's what they mean by conspiracy theories. People who preach the truth, the authorized version of the scriptures. Those who go about to expose the Jesuit order, okay? Those who go about to expose the truth of the religion of the poison crown and the truth of the murderous steel of the Jesuit poniard. See, calling evil good and good evil. They want not the truth, but they have pleasure in unrighteousness. See, we've already looked at that. What they, what he's t talking about, conspiracy theories and lies, uh, most all, more often than not, he's bashing those who speak truth. And there are those of the church who are of the Church of the Living God who speak the truth, obviously, and do what they can in whatever capacity they are in to expose what is going on. But there are those who are not of the Church of the Living God who are also doing what they can. To expose what's going on but a lot of the times they don't connect the dots see they don't connect this all to Satan and his church Roman Catholicism mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and on to more specifically the Jesuit order the army of the whore Roman Catholicism they they fail to make those connections and a lot of these truther guys who do speak really good truth sometimes they leave out the ultimate source of all truth, Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, the life, 
No man cometh unto the Father but by him. And sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth, the authorized version of the scriptures. A lot of those out there who are talking, these truthers, they like to leave they like to leave out Satan and Catholicism and the Jesuits and they don't like to tie those dots together and they don't often talk about the true Jesus Christ of the scriptures. Why? Because of Christianity that tells you just believe, which is associated with their church buildings. I, I'm, a, I'm afraid for you lost people. I really am. And like I've said, we've already looked at it. We know, we know the climate of the world and those who are of the world. So what? Does that mean we shouldn't try? As the Lord will have us? Does that mean we just sit back and do nothing? In a horizon scanning report presented to the General Assembly and at a press conference Friday, Gutierrez said in his said his vision for the breakthrough scenario to a greener and safer world is driven by the principle of working together, ecumenicalism, recognizing that we are bound to each other and that no community or country, however powerful, can solve its challenges alone. We all need to come together when God has us to be separate. Okay? Tower of Babel. All the world was coming together. And what happened? They built themselves towers to reach unto heaven. Okay? God saw it and confounded their language. and Spread them out. God wants diversity. God wants separation. Okay? God doesn't want us all coming together. When all of mankind gets together, it's not a good thing. The report, our common agenda. This is so Catholic and Jesuit, it's not even funny. Is a response to last year's declaration by world leaders on the 70th, 75th, 75th anniversary of the United Nations and the request from the Assembly's 193 member nations for the UN chief to make recommendations to address the challenges for global governance. People want a savior. People want a hero. People want to think it's Trump here in America. And an idiot is someone who is without uh, logic or reason. Okay? Um, you lost people, void of logic and reason. You are void of logic of re and reason if you think it's Kamala Harris and her front man smoking Joe. You're a fool. You're unwise. Global governance. Je uh, Napoleon said about the Jesuit order that they are a military organization, not a religious order. Their, uh, their leader is a general of an army, not the mere father, father of a monastery. And their goal, the Jesuit order, is to rule, to bring about all heads under Catholicism to rule the world by the volition of a single man. That is the end of the Jesuit order. To deliver the entire world up to that man of sin, the son of perdition. Global governance. One world government. You know, the new world order, which is not a new world order, but a return onto the dark ages, okay? In today's world, Gutierrez said, Global decision-making is fixed on immediate gain, ignoring the long-term consequences of decisions or indecision. He said, He said, Multilateral institutions have proven to be 
too weak and fragmented for today's global challenges and risks. What's needed, Gutierrez said, is not new multilateral bureaucracies, but more effective multilateral institutions, including a United Nations 2.0. more relevant to the 21st century. What you, you'll see it. I'll, I'll link it in the uh, description box. They, they do that with scripture. You know what people call Bibles, okay? Um, this, the, the authorized version, the King James Version, is too archaic. Can't be understood. So here, let's, let Catholicism give you a Bible in a language that you can understand. See, that's euphemism. That's euphemistic language. Changing definitions. And hence, when you do that, what happens? Well, you change the condition, right? That's what Jesuits do. And we need multilateralism with teeth, he said. In the report outlining his vision to fix the world, Gutierrez said immediate action is needed to protect the planet's most precious assets from oceans to outer space, to ensure it is livable, and to deliver on the aspirations of people everywhere for peace and good health. See, they're saying we need peace and safety. Uh, is that it? He called for an immediate global vaccination plan implemented by an emergency task force saying investing 50 billion in vaccinations now could add an estimated 9 trillion to the global economy in the next four years. We, we in for some rough, rough times, people. Church of the Living God, you and I, brother, sister. We're their target. The report... Did I skip something? No. The report proposes that a global summit of the future takes place in 2023 that would not only look at all these issues, but go beyond traditional security threats to strengthen global governance of digital technology and outer space, so-called, and to manage future risks and crises, he said. Strengthen global governance of digital technology. Oh, say like the mark of the beast in your right hand or in your forehead? It would also consider a, <laughs> a new agenda for peace, including measures to reduce strategic risks from nuclear weapons, cyber warfare, and lethal, lethal auto-no-mission, auto-nomos weapons, auto, autonomous weapons. Computer-controlled weapons? Autonomous weapons. Which Gutierrez called one of humanity's most destabilizing inventions. Autonomous weapons. Cyber weapons. Does that mean computer-controlled weaponry? Kind of like artificial intelligence weaponry that thinks for itself? Hmm, interesting. Someone let me know in the comments section, please, if you will. The Secretary General said a new United Nations Futures Lab will publish regular reports on mega trends and risks. He said the COVID-19 pandemic also exposed deficiencies in the global financial system 
and no man might buy or sell save he who had the mark in his right hand or in his forehead. To tackle these weaknesses and integrate the, goal, the global financial system with other global priorities, Gutierrez proposed holding summits every two years of the 20 leading economies in the G20, the UN's Economic and Social Council. The heads of international financial institutions including the International Monetary Fund and World Bank and the UN Secretary General. All that's Jesuit. All of it's Jesuit, controlled by the Vatican. All of it. All of it. The banks, uh, it's the Jews. Sh shut up. Yes, there are Jews that rule banks, yes, but they work from the Jesuit order, okay? Okay, it's the Jesuits. Okay, it's not the Jews, it's the Jesuits, okay? Huh. That's all Jesuit, by the way. World Bank, uh, heads of the international financial institutions, all Jesuit. He also called for the correction of a major blind spot in how we measure progress and prosperity, saying gross domestic product of GDP fails to account for the incalculable social and environmental damage that may be caused by the pursuit of profit. My report calls for new metrics that value the life and well-being of the many over short-term profit for the few, Gutierrez said. It also calls for a new emergency platform that would be triggered automatically in large-scale crisis crises comprising governments, the UN system, international financial institutions, civil society, the private sector, sector, and others, he said. Get a load of that. An emergency platform? Daniel chapter 7. Daniel. Daniel chapter 7. Verses 21 on to verse 28. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them, until the Ancient of Days came, Ancient of Days, our Lord Jesus Christ, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth, fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. That fourth uh, kingdom is Roman Catholicism. Okay? And the army of the, that fourth kingdom, Roman Catholicism, Satan's church, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, the army of that kingdom is the Jesuit order. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall, that shall arise. And another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first. And he shall subdue three kingdoms. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Time, times, dividing of time. Three and a half years maybe? But the judgments shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to thee people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey Him. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, when He come back at His second coming with us, the church of the living God, who get redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. And He's going to be ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me. But I kept the matter in my heart. Hmm. In 
incredible. Let's continue. Gutierrez also proposed reproposing the UN Trusteeship Council, whose work is largely completed, to create an intergovernmental body for intergovernational for intergenerational issues that would be a platform to consider the interests of the entire human family, present and future. Boy, I, I, would, I would almost say to you that a lot of this is taken word for word out of the Roman Catholic Catechism. As part of a new fo focus on the world's young people and future generations, Gutierrez said he intends to appoint a special envoy for future generations to ensure the interests of those born in the 21st century and establish a new United Nations Youth Office. Oh, you disgusting devils. The target of the Jesuit is today's youth. And because the youth of today are targeted by the Jesuit order. And remember, everything is done today for the kids. Oh, our innocent, sweet little darling kids. Right? They're so innocent, so pure. And now, hey, hey, don't misunderstand me. A child before that age of accountability, and we don't know what that age is. It's different for the person, spirit, soul, and body, and it's all up to the Lord, okay? But, Children who are incapable of knowing the truth of God, the fact that they have sinned against him and that they're in trouble, that depends on the child's age and it depends on the Lord ultimately, okay? But children before that age, whenever that it is, it is it's different for person, spirit, soul, and body. Yeah, they are innocent to uh, respect, meaning God won't hold it against them that because they don't, they can't grasp that, okay? But... See, you youngins out there, you youngins, what this kind of stuff, what the Jesuit order is trying to do and working on you to do is to make you this, what we read in Proverbs chapter 30. We will be reading from verses 11 on to verse 14. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. You young people out there who think sodomy is okay, that being transgender is okay, you're not washed from your filthiness, but yet you're pure in your own eyes because these devils tell you that it's okay. Get in touch with your feelings. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are... Lift it up, prideful, proud, because you're babied. Because you're told everything is okay. It's okay. You can be a girl if you're a boy or a boy if you're a girl. Teaching kids, 10-year-old kids, about, about sexual things in these Jesuit-controlled schools. And amen to several of you. Get your children out of the school system. What are they producing in your children? Hmm? What are they producing in children? You tell me. You tell me. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Remember, poor there is not just a reference of having no money. Poor in spirit, who weep, who weep over the world that what the devil has been allowed as judgment to do unto these people who want not the truth. You young people. The generation that is now, I firmly believe, is that generation being targeted for when we, the Church of the Living God, get redeemed? It's that younger generation that is being groomed right now to be the controlling generation during the time of Jacob's trouble. Let's continue this. Saying much of the world's unease is rooted in poverty and growing in inequality. Gutierrez noted that 
the 10 richest men saw their combined wealth increase by half a trillion dollars since the COVID-19 pandemic began. While 55% of the world's population, or 4 billion people, are one step away from destitution with no social protection whatsoever. Hi, that's us! <laughs> but see, our help cometh from the Lord. Okay? Our help comes from the Lord. To address the threats to social stability, the UN chief recommended a series of measures to provide universal health coverage, education, no thank you, housing, decent work, and income protection for everyone everywhere. Sounds like communism. Communism that was created by the Jesuit order, attributed onto Marx and Engel, who were Jews. See how the Jesuits want to blame shift chaff and redirect, you know, everything to the Jews to make you uh, lost people who are without, uh, uh, who are void of logic and reason, <laughs> um, to blame the Jews instead of the, your rightful enemy, Rome! Ugh. All right. Gutierrez proposed holding a World Social Summit in 2025 on global efforts to address these issues and repair the social fabric. The Secretary General also proposed global action to tackle disinformation and conspiracy theories and promote facts, science so falsely called, and integrity in public discourse. We must make lying wrong again, Gutierrez says. Said, we must make America great again. <laughs> yeah, and what they call conspiracy theories and disinformation, those who are exposing what they're doing, telling the truth. This is, this is Satan at work, people. This is Satan at work. That was the entirety of this uh, article, by the way. Th this is Satan at work. Okay? Now, another link I'm going to link in this is uh, a Wicked, uh, Wikipedia link about the Georgia Guidestones. Georgia Guidestones. Okay? On the Georgia Guidestones, there are ten... Mocking the scriptures. Ten commandments. Now, with what we just looked at from this UN chief, which is, I mean, all that really needs to happen is the Church of the Living God to get out of here. That's all that really needs to happen. The Mark of the Beast can be implemented. The technology is out there. They can do it. Okay? They can rebuild that third temple quick, fast, like in, in, in a hurry. It's not, I believe personally, it's not until midway during the time of Jacob's trouble when the entire world economy collapses, okay? Individual nations' economies can collapse. Look at what happened in Russia, okay? When the Communist uh, Party fell, when social, uh, whatever... Um, communism fell, supposedly, okay? Look at what happened to that country, to Russia, okay? Their economy collapsed. Look at the Weimar Republic with their paper currency where they would take literally buckets of their worthless paper currency to try and buy a gallon of milk. Uh, the history of paper currency traces back onto the Roman Catholic interdict where they would give notes for currency in accordance with the interdict. But, I'm going to share with you what's on the Georgia Guidestones, their Ten Commandments. Sound familiar with what we just looked at? Number one, maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. That's what the Bill Gates of Hell wants. That's what all these corporations want. 
Uh, that's one of the uh, objects of the steel of the Jesuit Punyard. Okay? Guide reproduction wisely. Improving fitness and diversity. Eugenics. Designer babies. Beg your pardon. Apparently, and I... <laughs> Excuse me. You can go to a doctor and have a child of your own design. Apparently you can um, choose what eye color they have by the scientists playing God and by genetically modifying organisms. <laughs> uh, you can make designer babies. And also... Uh, like it was in China for a while. Uh, what was it? Three children per family. Also kind of like what they did in Egypt, what Pharaoh did to the Israelites. If anyone uh, bears a male, uh, throw him in the sea. But if a woman, keep him, keep her. Kind of like what they did in Egypt. It's in the book of Exodus. Go find that out on your own time, please. Number three. Unite humanity with a living new language. New speak. New speak. Which George Orwell talks about in 1984. Euphemistic language. You have a cold. No. No, you have a flu. No, you have COVID-19. euphemistic language. Guess what? Somebody's stupid. Uh, they're mentally challenged or they have a learning disorder. Simple, honest, direct language. But see, a new, with, unite humanity with a living new language Euphemistic language. Euphemistic language. Four, rule passion. Faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Yeah. Five, protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Six, get a load of this one. Let all nations rule inter internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Funny, that's their sixth commandment, and it points to a one world government by a one world leader. Seven, avoid petty laws and useless officials. No, establish. A one world government ruler, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Balance personal rights and social duties. Communism. Communism. Prize truth, which is relative to your perception, remember. <laughs> Beauty. Love. Seeking harmony with the infinite, which the son of perdition is going to claim to be. Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. Repeat it twice. Now doesn't that sound kind of similar to what we just went over? Sure does, doesn't it? You know, this article... I don't know when when this article, what the date of this article was. Um, I do not know. September 11th, 2021. Go figure that. But that's when he said that. On September 11th, 9-11. I'm sure that was a coincidence, right? Look, you who have ears to hear, I hope you hear. 
And like I said, it's, all, it's about one. One person hear the truth and come to our Lord Jesus Christ. This is coming rapidly upon us. And without the Lord Jesus Christ, you have no hope. You have no hope. If you come to the Lord Jesus Christ on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, contrite, having godly sorrow that you've sinned against God, it's your fault that he died, buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, he shed his blood for the forgiveness of sins. He can forgive you. But see, you got to go through him. You got to go through him broken. You're not a good person. You can't save yourself. And when the Lord breaks you, that will create a sorrow in you when you realize how worthless you are and that he died for you. Guess what? You know what's the most stinging thing of it all? Is it's your fault that he died. He, he bore your penalty. He bore your sin while he himself sinned not. God can't sin. And he died for you. And that blood that he shed is the payment to forgive you of your sins. And when he breaks you of your self-righteousness, believe me, I know that hopelessness, that fear, that terror. And, the, and when he makes you know because of you. Because of you. And see, when you know that, you also be, will be made aware that if he doesn't save you, you have one destination. You're going to burn in hell forever and ever. Where your worm will not die and the fire will not be quenched. That ought to scare the hell out of you. And someone who is truly broken of their self-righteousness and contrite, you're going to call on the name of the Lord. Out of fear, sorrow, desperation. Call upon the name of the Lord. Ask him to forgive you, and may he do so. But he knows the heart. It's an issue of the heart, people. Yeah, God knows your heart. And he knows that it's full of pride. There's several links in this video addressing that. Our time is almost up. Whether we have three years... One year, three years, five years, ten years. Without Jesus Christ, you have no hope. You have no hope without Jesus Christ. Please consider these things that I tell you. Time's almost up. And this kind of stuff is what you're going to be facing. In a dispensation where if you take what is known as the mark of the beast, which is in your right hand or in your forehead, you're damned. There's no getting out of it. You're going to hell no matter what. How could you have the church of the living God, my brethren and sisters, how could you not be concerned for those people? How could you not be concerned? It's going to be it for this video. Thank you, brother, so much for um, sharing this article with me. Wow. Son of Perdition, anybody? Thank you so much for watching this if you do. We love you. I'll see you in the next video.